No, Yvette's brilliant. Yvette's absolutely fantastic. So she came to the ACCA, and like everybody at the ACCA, was not a bit interested, then suddenly saw the reasons, saw the benefit of actually doing so, and she's really taken it on, as have most of the people at the ACCA. And actually, people at the ACCA, from that presentation, won clients the next week, the next month, the next year doing it, just by literally following some of these tips. Just by making the smallest changes, you can basically change scape to basically be more engaging, have a higher profile, sell more tickets, have more events, more sponsorships, and just be more engaged and have a higher profile in general. So this is for you. This is very much for you. I mean, we have the public one next week, which we're doing in the um, gallery. Gallery. So um, tell all your friends how fantastic this is, even if you don't think it's fantastic. Just tell them it's fantastic. Get them along next weekend, next week, next Thursday, isn't it? Next Thursday? Next Thursday. I think it's next Thursday. So um, I was just, just saying to uh, um, Yvette that um, you know success when you walk into the toilets and you see your face there on a poster. So it must be totally, you know, that's the ultimate of my career. Now I've walked into the toilets and the men's toilets there and I saw my picture there. <laughs> Never before has that happened to me. <laughs> um, but this is obviously for the community as well. So we're basically doing this talk next week so that your members and people who come here, entrepreneurs, dancers, people in eSport, whoever it happens to be, can also benefit from this because they will benefit the most, just like you will, through their personal branding on LinkedIn. Their future is very much here. So please do ask questions along the way. This is very much for you. This is so if you get asked questions by people, you can answer them. So please say why people should come. People, you know, ask questions about what it's in for you, what it's in for the company, what's in for the, from a personal perspective. Because ultimately, one of the reasons why I go about the personal branding book as well as the social selling book is it's, it is about personal branding, it's about you. So we're gonna go through this and do have your mobiles ready because about halfway through, I'm gonna do a little trick which you can repeat at events in Scape for the next kind of like 100 years. It's an amazing trick and once you do it, You'll always use it at any event, anywhere, because it's absolutely fantastic. But you need the mobile app to actually do it. Just warning you in advance to have the mobile app ready, because it's a really, really good trip. But why listen to me? Well, a lot of people are out there doing LinkedIn marketing and LinkedIn training, but nobody else has got nearly 900 recommendations from people who've actually seen my masterclasses or you know, work with us on black marketing. We've won lots of awards. We won Power Profile Awards, which actually come from LinkedIn about being engaging. Uh, we also win the awards like the B2B Marketing Agency the award, Year the Award, for example. We have the three books. Uh, the Blue Book, which is the first book. Uh, it's now the second edition about LinkedIn. So if you really want to know the basics of LinkedIn, you can get this on uh, Amazon. Unfortunately, because we're in Singapore, you can't get it on Kindle. Because did you know that Kindle is banned in Singapore? It's submersive. I don't know why. It's obviously very, you know, oh, I can't do this Kindle in Singapore. You have to switch your VPN on. And then you switch your VPN on like you do to get you know, the good Netflix. And actually get, um, you, can download the net, you can download the Kindle. But you can't do Kindle in Singapore. Um, but we have an audio book. We have paperback. We have hardback. And we have Kindle if you are outside of Singapore. We also have the personal branding book and we have the social selling book, which is based on our social selling conferences, uh, which we're going to have uh, this year in 2019. We also have the five brands. We have Black, which employs about 29 people now in Singapore. About 90% of them are Singaporeans. Um, over at um, Distri in Republic Plaza, we have Rockstar Keynote Speaker, which is promoting female keynote speakers. So if you know a female keynote speaker who wants a bureau to actually push them, we've just created a brand and a business to actually push that because so many female speakers were coming to us saying they could not get a gig because it was basically all white guys or all just guys in general on the panel or the keynotes. So basically they needed help for help to have them being pushed and being promoted more aggressively than they would have done otherwise. So we've created a bureau to actually do that. We've got clients across the world. Literally, we've got over 100 speakers from America to Sydney, from Hong Kong to London, from Singapore to Shanghai, who basically we now represent. So if you know somebody who's a female uh, keynote speaker, we'd love to represent them and help them promote their career as well. You, might, you probably do know people uh, amongst the Scape community. We have the conference brand, we have the PR brand, and we have, even have a Mohawk brand, which does TripAdvisor marketing as well as LinkedIn marketing. And we have the Masterclass brand, which this is a mini version of. But if you Google yourself, the reason why we're very passionate about LinkedIn is it's not just about LinkedIn. It is about Google, and Yvette knows what's going to come next. Because if I Google Yvette, for example, the first thing that comes up is Yvette's always ready to pursue business growth. <laughs> she changed this profile after having seen my presentation. And this is the first impression you get of Yvette. It's very, very positive. It's a fantastic presentation. You basically see that and go, wow, fantastic. I like that. It's got energy to it. She wants to climb mountains and she wants to grow. And she's added in, this is where your maiden name normally is. So extraordinary strategist and executor is where you normally put where you used to be married. If you weren't married, basically, you can use that space. And Yvette's cleverly used that space to promote herself in a slightly different way. 
So you can use all this space to create a very positive personal brand. And of course, you should be following the Scape um, page. Unfortunately, it's only got 204 followers at the moment. So we really need to kind of drive up the engagement levels of the Scape page, hopefully over the next few weeks when we do these presentations and case studies, more people will do it. But it does take you guys to do it as well. So you need to be following it, you need to be sharing things from the Scape page, and that's not really happening at the moment. So you basically need to be doing that as well, because the team obviously are promoting things on a kind of weekly, bi-weekly basis. So you really need to be good to promote that at the same time. But why LinkedIn? I mean, why LinkedIn really is because when I first came to Singapore 10 years ago now, I did not know a single person in Singapore. And I used to live in London, and I escaped London because I hadn't seen the sun for many, many years. Anyone who lives in London or has been to London, outside of that one day in July this summer, basically knows what I'm talking about. There's drizzle, and that's in the summer. There's drizzle in the winter, and it's dark. So basically you have a question of drizzle and dr with a bit of light, and drizzle with darkness. That's why I came here. Uh, plus the tax rates, of course, and the weather in general. And the fact that you don't have strikes, it's fantastic. Because I used to live in London. Every other week, you'd have a strike on the tube. It's come here, it's fantastic. You don't have strikes. Um, so I got my first, my second, and my third job by using LinkedIn. I networked, networked, networked. I had 200 connections back in 2009 in London and said, who do you know in Singapore? And I reached out to people they knew, and people here said, yes, I'll meet Chris, because it's Singapore. People in same in London, people would never have met me. They just said, no, maybe in a year's time or two years' time, if you're lucky, whereas here they're much more open-minded. So I met Singaporeans, I met Filipinos, I met Indonesians, I met English people, I met all kinds of people who actually said, yes, I will meet you. And as a result of that, I do that now. So if somebody approaches me on LinkedIn and says, I need your help, will you meet me? I will always say yes as well. So the kind of spirit of kind of helping each other happens on LinkedIn. And then I created Black Marketing because more people, when I was using LinkedIn, noticed I was doing LinkedIn activity, and people said to me, can you do my profile? So everything's come through from LinkedIn. So I have a passionate belief in it because I've used it myself to get jobs, I've used it to get clients for other people, and I've used it to get clients for myself. And ultimately, it's the only social media platform that actually is professional. And that's the key here. It's not trying to be Facebook or WeChat or Twitter or Instagram or Line or anything else. It's professional context. It's for social media network in a professional context. And if you look at where these people are, they're basically everywhere, apart from two countries. Can anyone name the two countries LinkedIn is not at? Two countries. There's a big clue. Don't say, you can't say Syria or Afghanistan or China because they're on that map. Well, Russia is one, correct. Russia is one. You see the big gap there? It's banned in Russia. Which other country is a rogue nation of the world? It's not America. Greenland, Greenland did you say? <laughs> no, Greenland's on. Greenland's not a rogue nation. Why do you think Greenland was a rogue nation? <laughs> South Korea. North Korea, not South Korea. North Korea. <laughs> correct. North Korea. North Korea and Russia are the only two countries in the world where you can't get linked in. You can get linked in Afghanistan and Syria and Iran, all these kind of places, Nigeria. Africa is one of the fastest growing nations, countries. But obviously, it starts off the States. The States is very big, and Europe's very big. Where I come from, London, you know, Britain's got 25 million. But Asia is where it's nearly at. So Asia is very much where the growth is. You know, China, India is 100 million people, basically. So it's growing, growing, growing. And Asia will be the biggest growing nation, the biggest nation um, in terms of uh, region in the world in a few years' time. So that's where the growth is, very much in Asia. But what LinkedIn's all about is gamification. So what I mean by that is that the more you put into LinkedIn, the more you get out of it. If you do things on LinkedIn, like I'll show you today, your rankings will go up automatically just by you doing things. Because LinkedIn rewards you just by doing things. And that's the fantastic thing about you. But the perverse thing is that it becomes very addictive. So you end up doing things when you shouldn't be, like on dates or the cinema or kind of like you know, Christmas Day or things like that because you want to keep your rankings up because they also punish you. If you don't basically keep it going, they basically drop you down the rankings. So it becomes very addictive as a result of it. Yvette's nodding here because <laughs> it is very addictive, but that's a good thing. And I like this quote, not because I like James Blunt, because no one would publicly say they liked James Blunt, but because I like the quote. I'm self-deprecating because I'm British. If I was American, I would tell you how great I was. And it sums up LinkedIn. There's loads of Americans on LinkedIn telling you how great they are. And the problem is they're not. But they claim they are, so people believe them, as we know by the president. So what we have to do is basically fight back against the Americans and actually be less British and less Asians because we're very modest in Asia, very modest in Britain. Normally go, no, it's a team effort. No, I can't promote myself. No, I don't want to push myself forwards. But the problem is if you don't do that, there will be some American who comes along and steals that job and steals that investment and steals that opportunity. So we have to fight back against the Americans. They have enough opportunities. 
So we believe there's four different ways of actually promoting LinkedIn, promoting yourself on LinkedIn. Your personal branding, ultimately it's all about you. People buy people, people buy you. <coughs> and they get an impression of your public brand and your personal brand through LinkedIn, whether you like it or not. Content marketing is key to that. Company branding, obviously marketing scape at the same time, but it comes through your profile that you market scape by building up your profile. And ultimately social selling. So the first impression is your visual impression. The visual impression is so impactful. So if I show you this, you get a visual impression of a brand. He has a public brand. He has the certain makeup, his certain hairstyle, certain dress sense. He brings disruption and technology to things. He has values. You always think of him and you see values in your mind about what he's associated with. So you have the same thing. So I show you some LinkedIn profiles like Steve Dawson here in Singapore, for example, who's on Fox Sports. You have a public impression of him. And he wants you to know of him as a coach rather than be on Fox Sports. Hence why his LinkedIn profile doesn't mention Fox Sports that much. It goes the fact that it's about him being a coach and he's a fantastic coach. Or Karen here, who's the GPS girl. Yes, she's the voice that goes recalculating, recalculating, recalculating on two billion devices. She's also the voice of Siri. So she's one of those voices and she created a whole personal brand. So her mohawk is GPS. That's why I say everyone's got a mohawk of some kind. She's got GPS. But she's created an entire career because she's a keynote speaker, a concert performer. She's not based her entire career on just being paid for being GPS girl. So it's about what you take out of it. Look at Frederick here, also based in Singapore. He's the ultimate global speaker, been to 20, 65 different um, countries across the world on six continents. So he wants you to know through the branding, the picture, the headline, that he is the global speaker. So even though he's in Singapore, most of his gigs are actually outside. Even Sophia the robot is on LinkedIn. Lucky enough to meet her in Hong Kong. She accepted my invitation. I'm sure she did it personally. <laughs> but she's on Hong Kong too. So don't do things like this. Because as much as I might aspire one day to being George Clooney, I'm not. So I can't use his picture in my profile. And if someone like this walked into this room now, we'd all be running away because headless people don't do very well in life or on LinkedIn. And this is what I call your classic Facebook photograph. This is where you're, you're having a good time. It's uh, you're down in Boat Quay having a few drinks. It's 3 a.m. You're in some KTV bar. Someone says, dress as a panda. You say, why not? It's 3 a.m. You've had a few drinks. And somebody else says, let's put it on your LinkedIn profile. Again, you've had a few drinks, you say yes to anything. So it goes on your LinkedIn profile. And the morning you go, what on earth am I doing on my LinkedIn profile? Don't do that. It's not Facebook. And which one's Melita? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. How do you talk to someone you can't even communicate with? You don't know who you're talking to. And why would you use this as your LinkedIn profile? I don't understand why people use animals on their LinkedIn profile. And even if you were the brand director of Guinness, because that is the Guinness birds, you still wouldn't use that as your LinkedIn profile. And this guy could not decide which picture to use, so he put all the pictures together. The trouble is, on your mobile, it's like this small, you can't tell any of them. And Elizabeth here went for the full Tinder look. Unfortunately, she is in a small company called the Hyatt Hotel Group, and she's in charge of human resources. I don't think you can do that these days, hashtag me too. Certainly can't look like that, Elizabeth. So Elizabeth needs to change her profile picture pretty quick. And definitely don't do this, especially if you live in China. This does not go down very well at the moment. <laughs> very career limiting, I would say.